Don't I watch your dating advice video and I think you're actually unironically very smart? The thing about me is just that, like, when I was younger, right? The thing about being unattractive as a kid is that if you want people to like you, they're never gonna like you just because of how you look, you know? So it's like you have to have parts of your personality make people want to interact with you. So that's why since I was like never attractive when I was younger, right? And I was like always like overweight. It's like I had to be smart and I had to be funny to get people to want to interact with me. And that's why like a lot of people look at me and they'll think like, oh, he wears stringers on stream. He lifts, you know, and then they'll have this like conception of me. But the thing about it is that I'm not at all like what they believe. Watch his video about clinically depressed people being pussy and you'll disregard him. Alright, Ego, I'm just gonna permit you for that message. Because what if I tell you I know exactly which video you're talking about? And the entire takeaway that I had from that video wasn't that they're pussies. I said that if you're depressed, sitting there, and always attributing everything to depression is never gonna help. So sitting there and feeling like you can overcome your depression is the only way that you can ever actually overcome it. And if not, you're always just succumbing to the circumstance. But if you're that, like, retarded that you're gonna say something that's fucking stupid, then I'll just ban you. How crazy are you for saying that? Base ban? But I mean, dude, it's just like, this is what people don't get. So the video he was referring to is one where I was talking about, you can never change your circumstance, you can only change your outlook. So it's like, let me give you an example. Imagine there's a guy who gets kidnapped, okay? And every day he is beaten in game, right? Imagine this guy wakes up every morning and he thinks to himself, I'm never gonna get out of here, it's over. He's gonna sit there and he's gonna be sad and he'll be depressed and he'll be unhappy. But imagine every day he wakes up and he thinks to himself, today's the day I finally get rescued, right? Then the thing about it is that in the moment that he's living, he will be happier than he would be if he held that other mind state, right? And what I was saying, right, that entire video, what I was talking about, was the fact that if you're there and you're confronted with a thing, like let's say you have something, having a negative outlook or having an outlook that feels like you'll never make it out of that, like, that sphere, right, will only make it so you become infinitely sadder and more depressed and, like, worse off than you would be otherwise. It's like, let's say someone says, you have six months to live, you're dying of cancer. And you're like, okay, I have six months to live in game. So I'll just sit here and you have two options. Either one, you can sit there and say, I'm dying in six months. So who cares? I won't do anything anyways. Or they'll be the person who's like, fuck it. I'll just make the most of my life while I'm here then. And then they'll go out and they'll do stuff, right? And it's like, these people were confronted with the same exact thing. But because both of their mentalities were completely different, one of them was able to have an actual enjoyable time while they were still around, whereas the other wasn't able to, right? But the problem is, it's a lot harder for someone to be confronted with adversity and then succumb to the adversity than it is to go through things that would make you be able to overcome that adversity. If that makes sense. Like, think about me, for example. I could just sit there every day and I could just perma retransfer and talk about how, oh, hacker bands are keeping me hard stuck. This, that, oh, I'll never be able to climb because of hacker bands. Like, fuck hacker bands. And I'll just play every game out and, like, lose games on hacker. Or I could sit there and be like, all right, there's an adversity. But instead of sitting there and just spamming games and playing games I know are lost, I'll just dodge. So it's like, I'm accepting that there's a situation. But instead of making the worst out of that situation, I'm making the best out of that situation because my mindset allows for me to do that, right? But then there are going to be people who just want to remain unhappy and they want to remain sad because it's like, it's very easy to be unhappy and sad, you know? It's hard to force yourself to do things that will make you happy when you're in mental states like that. It's like, I know what you're saying, but I will still be depressed because self-hatred. Yeah, but exactly, but that's what I'm talking to you about, right? It's that people will sit there, but then it, at that point, it's not the situation that's the problem, it's you that's the problem. Like, I'll give you an example, and the reason I had this entire discussion in the first place was because I saw a TikTok where this guy was there and he said, oh, in all of my recent relationships, I've treated my partner badly because when I was growing up, I would watch my parents treat each other badly. So it's like now I treat my partner badly. And then it's like he looks at himself in the mirror and he's like, bro, 
It doesn't matter what happens in your life. You need to make the changes that overcome it. And you need to sit there and you need to do things that make you improve as a person. And it's like he was getting hate in the comment section. People were like, it's not that easy. How dare you say something like that? And I was just awestruck. I was like, how the fuck can these people hate on a message like that? But it's because people go through shit in their lives and then they don't want to take any measures that actually help them improve as people and grow from their past experiences. And instead they want to remain victims, right? It's this whole like victimhood mentality. And I'll tell you why, unironically. The reason why is because of the internet. And I wish I was joking. If you're on the internet and you say something like, I have X, Y, or Z, then it's a lot easier to stand out than if you were just like a normal person. So a lot of the time what people are going to do is there, and this this isn't a joke, and you can see this a lot, like in-game, they'll, they'll have something, and then they'll base their entire personality around the fact that they have something. And anytime anything comes up, they'll just say, oh, it's because I have this or that. That's why I act the way I do. Because for them, it makes them feel like they're different in an online scene where nobody is different, right? And that's why it gives them some kind of like validation to feel like, oh, people can like, I guess, differentiate me from others. So then they want to like always have that. But like in game, right? And that's a problem nowadays. And I know this is a problem. And I'll tell you why. Because I remember a year ago, two years ago, two years ago, it was the summer. And I was feeling depressed for, for literally no reason. I was feeling depressed. And I remember walking down the street one day and thinking to myself, damn, if only I had a like fucked up childhood or some shit, like let's say Steven said, for example, so that I'd have a reason to feel this way. And I could like, attributed to that do you know what i mean like in game i remember having that thought and then i thought wow what a dangerous thought to have that it's like you wish bad things so that then you could have like reasons it's it's really fucking crazy but the human brain works like that and the thing is i'm introspective enough that i can sit there and have thoughts and know why i'm having those thoughts you know being a victim and having victim mentality requires your brain to be more anxiety prone. Some of my thoughts are suggest science. I was down bad for six months, having really bad panic attacks, but as soon as I described my victim, I got out. And that's what I'm talking about. And the problem is people are going to sit there and they're going to hear a story like yours. And instead of saying that and being like, you know what, maybe I should be like that. They're going to feel hatred for you and they're going to hate you. You know, it's like, imagine, imagine there's like a village. Okay. And everybody in this village is poor. Right. And then one guy says, fuck it, I'm going to work and I'm going to make something of myself. And he gets rich, okay, because he puts the work in. Everyone from that village would just look at that guy and they would hate on that guy. They would say, fuck that guy. We hate that guy because it's easier for them to feel at ease if they hate on the people that are able to overcome their situations than if they were to sit there and aspire to be like them and make the necessary changes and put in the hard work required to actually make yourself like exit those situations. Does that make sense? Do you see the girl that pisses every time she deadlifts a lot? That's how I have, honestly. <sighs> this game might be dodge. Don't know how some weird takes, but say on mental health is actually spot on correct. It's important for people to listen to it. Do not bring the idea of people that can be. No, but that's what I'm talking about. It's like. And this is the wrong takeaway that people get is they'd be like, oh, so don't know. You're saying that people who are in those mental states, it's like it's their fault. But no. At the end of the day, it's, it has nothing to do with fault. And this is what people don't understand. Like, it has nothing to do with fault or who's at fault or, like, what's at fault. It has to do with, like, your perspective. Right? And you can always change your perspective. You can never change what happened in your life, but you can change your perspective going into the future. All therapy is circle jury and show that they really mil miserable. 9% addicted to benzos on this shit. I was going to take therapy away. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about. And it's like, the perfect example is think about me. When I feel sad and depressed, what do I do? I call Stevens. So that we can circle jerk about how miserable and depressed we are. Do you guys notice that? Dude, when I'm miserable, instead of sitting there and being like, fuck it, how can I overcome this misery? I call Stevens on Discord and talk about how we're the two most miserable men on the planet. It's like, how could that ever possibly help either of us, you know? And that's the kind of thing that will never allow us to, like, overcome it. Well, I tell you guys, we might have to go psychotic this game. But it's not that depression is not our fault, but to also realize that you can change your mental life? Exactly. The things that happen to you and the things that you have are never your fault. But your mentality is always on you to change. 
if it's bad. Let me give you an example. If my blind's 0-10 and, and I'm looking at my 0-10 and blind and I'm saying, fuck this shit team, I'm gonna FF and run it down, I'm gonna lose that game. But if I sit there and I say, my blind's 0-10 but maybe I can 1v9, I might just win that game. You just think of it in a league analogy and it makes sense. Mm. It's like Aatrox and Brand both came in late at the same time, so I'm not actually sure. No, he has to have there somewhere. If he would have started red, Aatrox would have gotten to him later. Because he would have done three Qs. Leash, so Lee had to have started this game. Okay, the problem is, Lee Sin can three count his bot side into an invade on my red. If he's smart. So I need to be careful here. Okay. I don't think Lee Sin better. Ah. Uh, wait, he gets him? Okay, that's actually huge. I'm about to tell you guys, shimming with the lay is actually broken because now I can look at my second monitor to see where Lee entered the mid from. Okay, where did Lee enter mid from? Where did he entered mid through bot side, so that means he full cleared his sub side into blue. So now he's probably around bot. I mean, top wave is sacked, we can just go for dive here. Just let me get it, go and get it, bro. Is that alright? Do you guys want to know mentality actually that made me blow up like really hard on Switch? And this isn't a joke. So when I initially started like uh, blowing up and I went to like 2k viewers, right? The mentality that I would start every stream with and the mentality I'm going to start my streams with soon was that these people have more viewers than me. Why can't I have more than them? And every day it's like I would go live and I would compare myself to other people. And I would be like, this guy has more viewers than me. Why? Why? And then I would sit there and I would do my stream with so much energy that it's almost like I force my viewer count to inflate just by being like perma energetic and shit. And I'm telling you, once I start actually ranking up again and once I actually feel like good and Hecarim's not banned every game, I'm going to have that same mentality again and it should go crazy. But it's like unironically my mentality too that has been like holding back my streams. Because it's like I don't have that mentality anymore. And I need to, you know? Okay, well the good news is Twitch stays for a wave now. So I got free kill. Nice. How can you say? You know one of the things that actually helped me get over my anxiety? I actually used to be anxious over everything, like when I was younger, right? But for me, the thing that changed my entire outlook on it was when I failed a math test and I asked my teacher, yo, can I please retake the test, please? Like, because it wasn't my fault that I failed. There was like something about the test that like made it so I failed. And then she looked at me and she said, when you miss a kick in soccer, you don't ask the ref for a re-kick. And then she told that to me, but then I realized that like, it doesn't matter whatever happens. Because at the end of the day, you can change the past, you can only change the future. So worrying over the past, unironically does nothing. And then when I came to that realization, I literally just like completely 180'd my entire mental. Like I, I just realized like, if I worry about the past, what does that actually benefit me at all, you know? And then I just stopped caring. Literally, I was just like, from one day to the next, I just completely stopped caring. And it's like, after I would take a test, I would never feel anything about it afterwards. I'd be like, alright, I took a test and that's it. Alright. I mean, I'll give you a good league analogy again for that. Let's say you're there and you're constantly worrying about the past, right? Imagine you're playing a league game and you make one misplay in lane. If you're always saying about that one misplay you made, then maybe you'll end up making more misplays because you're not actually focused on the game. But if you just take that past misplay as a learning experience, and now you completely just dedicate yourself to the game and you don't care about what you did in the past and you just take the game as it is, then now there's an infinitely higher chance that you're going to perform infinitely better than you would have if you were never worried about what you had already done. So use the past as a way to learn, but not as a way to influence your mentality and your outlook. Come on, if I can get one more Q, she said. There we go. 
Now good luck to open up mid too. I wanna get this guy roaming. Cause he's there 1v9 right now and Twitch and Brown are getting way too fed. Mm, I mean I unironically should never play around bot side right now. Play around bot side is a free way to losing this game if I in shutdown some. So what I do is I just play around like instead of playing around dragons, I play around like heralds and shit. And just like invades on the shit, yeah. Because if I go for dragons and then their binds there, but their binds the only strong part of the map, then it's the only way they can actually win the game, right? If I tell you guys, we're gonna kill Twitch. He wants a little red buff. Look at him, look at him, look at him. It's like we should have killed him, but we didn't. You know what I mean? And there was no reason for it either. Oh, this is fucked, isn't it? Mmm, not brand new something. Okay, I could 1v4 here. I can play for dragons. <laughs> it's not hard to get banned here. I don't type anything anymore. I'm scared. I mean, listen, if you're just not retarded, it's really hard to get banned in my stream. Like, you have to unironically have, like, <laughs> like getting banned in my stream. I don't know, dude. I don't know. So if you're getting banned, you're. Darn. Would I ban myself if I was a viewer? You know, that was the hardest thing for me as a streamer. Because what if I tell you, the problem is as a streamer, so when I was a smaller streamer, right, it's almost like the shit that I would find, like, really funny wasn't shit that... It's almost like the problem is you have to take on this other role as a streamer. Like, you can't... It's like someone could say something really crazy and you might find that funny, but it's like as a streamer, you would never be able to allow that in your Twitch chat. Does that make sense? They were like, imagine a teacher, right? There's a teacher and a student says or does something, right? And it's like, he might find that entertaining or funny on a personal level, but as a teacher, he needs to like penalize that kind of behavior, right? And that was one of the things that, oh, that was always like super hard for me because for me, it was always like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know things that I found funny were just like, so that's why, like, for me, and Charisma was actually the guy who helped me a lot with that. I was searching in the ocean for you. <laughs> because you guys want what the problem is? The problem with streaming, let me explain something to you. Is that a lot of the time, most people are gonna lurk. Like, watch this. Chat, type 1 if you've been watching the stream for at least the last 10 minutes and you just haven't said anything. Like, type 1. At least the last 10 minutes and you just haven't said anything. So it's like, you're gonna have all these people, right? You're gonna have all these people who are genuinely watching you, right? They're gonna be watching you. And they're never gonna say anything. So you're gonna have a very vocal minority of people who are gonna be watching you, and it's like, they'll interact with things that are going on, right? But then a lot of people are gonna be watching you, and it's like, they're not gonna tell you what they think, but they might leave and never come back if you say or do, like, something, right? So I'll give you a good example. Tarzan's there, and if you ask the perception of Tarzan, right, in most people's streams, they're gonna say, oh, he's toxic, and a lot of people don't like Tarzan. But if you go to his stream, every time he flames someone, everyone is just spamming Kek W, and they're laughing, right? So it's like, if you're Tarzan and you see your Twitch chat, you're gonna think to yourself, yo, people think this is funny. But then, if you look at the like greater perspective, it's like people will be like, yo, this isn't funny, we don't like it, you know? And the problem is, as a streamer, you have to learn that just because a few people are going to type cack W or something doesn't necessarily mean that something you said was funny. And it's just like, it's a weird thing because you can't always gauge the reaction of what you're saying, you know, or like what you're doing. You're the vocal minority? Well, that's what I'm talking about. And that's why like a lot of the time, like, Charisma actually helped me understand this a lot because when I was like 50 viewers, I had this like really toxic community, right? 
And then he told me one day, he's like, Dantes, why, like, why do you allow for it? And I said, well, the thing is, like, I'm a small streamer, right? So it's like, it's almost like if I want to grow, I need to keep around these, like, toxic viewers. Because if I keep around these toxic viewers, it's like, plus one viewer, so people have an easier time seeing me when they're on the Twitch directory, right? And then he told me, he's like, okay, but what about, let's say every day you have 500 people who, like, click on your stream and watch your stream. And let's say that one viewer who keeps spamming, like, toxic things, let's say that one viewer drives away even five people a day. Over the course of a month, how many potential viewers are you losing because of that one guy? And then when he put it in that perspective, I was like, holy shit. You know, like, he's actually 100% right. It's like, imagine, I'll give you an analogy. Imagine you're in a school, right? And you have your clique, right? Your friend group. And imagine your clique and your friend group. It's like, they bully everyone, right? And when you bully people, then they find it funny and they laugh, right? And you're then you're like, oh, but I need to keep bullying people so that I can actually sit with my friend group. But then what you don't understand is that there are so many like bystanders that are just like actively watching, right? And it's like all these people are people who are never going to want to be your friend because of the way you act and press like a very small minority of like the overarching thing. You know what I mean? And when I came to that realization, it made it a lot easier for me to like ban the toxic viewers and like curb all like the toxicity that was happening in my chat because right? I was like... It's actually not good for my growth, and it's not the way that I am. Anyways, so, like, why would I keep that, you know? Yes, but you cannot ban everything. Like, if it's racist or offensive, okay, but if an OG viewer gets banned for typing retard once, that's messed up. No, but that's the thing. It's, like, when I was reforming my community, I told everyone, yo, I'm reforming the community. And it's, like, this isn't a joke when I say this. I think 95% of my OG viewers are banned. Like, I'm not even trying. Because it's, like, I told them, I'm reforming my community and they just couldn't get on the same page and it's like I had to ban them. You guys want to know the real reason Tyler doesn't host or raid people? Well, it's it's because when he does, Stevens was telling me this thing about how he got in the same game as Tyler, like five games in a row, and his entire chat was just being racist. Like he had new viewers just being racist. And it's like one time I was watching Tyler's stream, right? And um, some guy had like linked this video that he had made and then at the end of it, he advertises Twitch. I went to the guy's Twitch stream after, and it's like, it was literally 300 people just going to chat to spam the N-word and shit, right? And that's why a lot of the bigger streamers you're gonna see, unironically have to ban the majority of their core community. Because, it, how do I explain this to you? As a streamer, it's kind of like, it, it, you're in this weird limbo. Because people watch you because they can interact with you and they can kind of shift the content towards them. But then at the same time, you're also a TV show for other people who just lurk all the time. And when you're a smaller streamer, everybody interacts with you on a very personal level all the time. So it's like when they see you start growing and they see you taking this more of like TV show type um, stream route because you have to to satisfy the majority of the viewers, then it's like they don't like that. And they unironically want to keep you at a small viewer count so that you can always be their streamer. It, it's it's this really crazy thing. And you might not understand what I'm getting at, but I'm sure you, like, type one if you see what I'm getting at. It's like they always want to keep you as a streamer, that as their streamer. So then when you start growing, they don't like it. So that's why a lot of time they'll act in ways that drive away newer viewers, right? And that's why I'm sure you found communities in the past where you join a Twitch chat and it just feels so unwelcoming. Like, there are so many inside jokes, there are so many of these, like, things that you just can't understand. So you just don't even bother saying anything, you never go back, right? And that's why I've always tried to, like, have my stream as the complete opposite of that. Just something that's very, like, open and that anyone can kind of, like, engage in and engage with, you know? That's why anytime, like, an inside joke thing will happen, I always try to explain it as well. It's, like, get new reviewers on the page. Same page. And that's why I'm telling you, streaming is a learning curve. And that's what I didn't know, right? Like, no streamer talks about this stuff. So it's, like, as a viewer, you would never know. But most streamers actually go through this shit.